very familiar passage in the tenth chapter as recorded by St. Mark, beginning with the 35th verse of that chapter, we read these words, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized with all shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. Then Jesus goes on toward the end of that passage to say, So shall it not be among you whosoever will be great among you shall be your servant and whosoever of you will be the chief shall be servant of all the setting is clear James and John are making a specific request master they had dreamed as most of the Hebrews uh, dreamed of a coming king of Israel who would set Jerusalem free and establish his kingdom on Mount Zion in righteousness ruled the world. And they thought of Jesus as this kind of king. And, and they were thinking of that day when Jesus would reign supreme as this new king of Israel. And they were saying, now, when you establish your kingdom, let one of us sit on the right hand and the other on the left hand of your throne. quickly, we would automatically condemn James and John, we would say they were selfish, why would they make such a selfish request, but before we condemn, condemn them too quickly, let us look calmly and honestly ourselves, and we will discover that we too have those same basic desires for recognition, for importance, that same desire for attention, that same desire to be first. Of course, the other disciples got mad with James and John, and you can understand why, but we must understand that we have some of the same James and John qualities. And that is deep down within all of us. An instinct. It's a kind of drum major instinct. A desire to be out front. A desire to lead the parade. A desire to be first. It is something that runs the whole of life. And so before we
condemn them. Let us see that we all have some major instinct. We all want to be important, to surpass others, to achieve distinction, to lead the parade. Sigmund Freud used to contend that sex was the dominant impulse and Adler came with a new argument saying that this quest for recognition, this desire for attention, this desire for distinction is the basic impulse, the basic drive of human, human life, this drum major instinct. You know, we begin early to ask life to put us first. Our first cry as a baby was a bid for attention. And all through childhood, the drum major impulse or instinct is a major obsession. Children ask life to grant them first place. They are a little bundle of ego. They have innately the drum major instinct. Now in adult life we still have it and we really never get by it. We like to do something good. And you know we like to be praised for it. Now if you don't believe that, you just go on living life and you will discover very soon that you like to be praised. Everybody likes it as a matter of fact. And somehow this warm glow we feel when we are praised or when our name is in print is something of the vitamin E to our ego. Nobody is unhappy when they are praised. Even if they know they don't deserve it, and even if they don't believe it, the only unhappy people about praise is when that praise is going too much towards somebody else. But everybody likes to be praised because of this real drum major instinct. Do you know that a lot of the race problem grows out of the drum major instinct? need that some people have to feel superior, a need that some people have to feel that they are first and to feel that their white skin ordained them to be first. As a result, this perverted use of the drum major instinct led to the most tragic prejudice, the most tragic expressions of man's inhumanity to man. I mean, not only does this thing go into the racial struggle, it goes into the struggle between nations. And I would submit to you this morning that what is wrong in the world today is that the nations of the world are engaged in a bitter, colossal contest for supremacy. And if some doesn't happen to stop this trend, I'm sorely afraid that we won't be here to talk about Jesus Christ and about God and about brotherhood too many more years. If somebody doesn't bring an end to this suicidal thrust that we see in the world today. None of us are going to be around because somebody is going to make the mistake through our senseless blundering of dropping a nuclear bomb 
somewhere, and then another one is going to drop. And don't let anybody fool you. This can happen within a matter of seconds. They have 20 megaton bombs in Russia right now that can destroy a city as big as New York in three seconds with everybody wiped away and every day. And we can do the same thing to Russia and China. But this is why we are drifting, and we are drifting back. Because nations are caught up with the dumb major instinct. I must be first. I must be supreme. Our nation must rule the world. And I am sad to say that the nation in which we live is the supreme culprit. And I'm going to continue to say it to America. Because I love this country too much to see the drift that it has taken. God didn't call America to do what she's doing in the world now. God didn't call America to engage in a senseless, unjust war as a war in Vietnam. And we are criminals in that war. We have committed more war crimes almost than any nation in the world. And I'm going to continue to say it. And we won't stop it because of our pride and our arrogance as a nation. But God has a way of even putting nations in their place. The God that I worship has a way of saying, don't play with me. He has a way of saying, as the God of the Old Testament used to say, the Hebrews, don't play with me. Don't play with me, Babylon. Be still and know that I'm God. If you don't stop your reckless course, I'll rise up and break the backbone of your power. And that can happen to America. Every now and then I go back and read Gibbon's Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. And when I come and look at America, I say to myself, the parallels are found. We have perverted let me rush on to my conclusion because I want you to see what Jesus was really saying. What was the answer that Jesus gave these men? It's very interesting. One would have thought that Jesus would have condemned them. One would have thought that Jesus would have said... You are out of your place. You are selfish. Why would you raise such a question? That isn't what Jesus did. He did something altogether different. And he said in substance, Oh, I see. You want to be first? You want to be great? You want to be important? You want to be... Significant? Well, you ought to be. If you're going to be my disciple, you must be. But he reordered priorities. And he said, yes, don't give up this instinct. It's a good instinct if you use it right. It's a good instinct if you don't distort it and pervert it. Don't give it up. Keep feeling the need for being important. Keep feeling the need for being first. And I want you to be first in love. I want you to be first in moral excellence. I want you to be first in generosity. That is what I want you to do. He transformed the situation by giving a new definition of greatness. And you know how he said it? He said, now, brethren, I can't give you greatness. And really, I can't make you first. This is what Jesus said to James and John. You must earn it. True greatness comes not by favoritism, but by fitness. The right hand and the left are not mine to give. They belong to those who are prepared. And so Jesus gave us a new norm of greatness. If you want to be important, wonderful. If you want to be recognized, wonderful. If you want to be great, wonderful. But recognize.
recognize that he who is greatest among you shall be your savior. That's a new definition of greatness. This morning, the thing that I like about it, by giving that definition of greatness, it means that everybody can be great. Because everybody can serve. Every now and then, I guess we all think realistically about that day when we will be victimized with what is life's final common denominator. That's something we call death. We all think about it, and every now and then I think about my own death, and I think about my own funeral, and I don't think of it in a morbid sense. Every now and then I ask myself, what is it? But I would want to say, and I leave the word to you this morning. If any of you around, when I have to meet my day, I don't want a long funeral. And if you get somebody to deliver the eulogy, tell them not to talk to me. Every now and then I wonder what I want them to say. Tell them not to mention that I have a Nobel Peace Prize. That isn't it. Tell them not to mention that I have three or four hundred other awards. That's not important. Tell them not to mention where I went to school. I'd like somebody to mention that day. And Martin Luther King Jr. tried to give his life serving up. I'd like for somebody to say that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to love somebody. I want you to say that day that I tried to be right on the wall question. I want you to be able to say that day that I did try to feed the hungry. I want you to be able to say that day that I did try in my life to clothe those who are naked. I want you to say on that day that I did try in my life to visit those who were in prison. I want you to say that I tried to love and serve humanity. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drum major. Say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. I was a drum major for righteousness. All of the other shallow things will not matter. I won't have any money to leave behind. I won't have the fine and luxurious things of life to leave behind. But I just want to leave a committed life behind. That's all I want to say. If I can help someone.
Jigsaw's Workshop of Puzzles Radio. 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 